Hello, everybody, and welcome to my new Let's Play of The Blackwell Legacy. Now, when I play a game for the first time, I kind of had this sort of inner commentary with myself as to whether or not I would uh, play this game um, for a Let's Play. Sometimes the game, I just think, nah, wouldn't be the best. But some games, I think maybe someday, we'll see. Then there are games like this, or should I say series like this, since it is a series of five games, in which I know immediately upon completion that I am definitely going to do this for the channel. So yes, this game, this series, is really good. Made by Wadjet, which, um, have I done a Wadjet game? I think we're the, uh, I know it's, uh, Francisco Gonzalez is involved with it, and he's done the uh, Ben Jordan series. He did, um... Oh yeah, the, um... A Golden Wake. I think that was a Watch It Games thing. So, yeah. I've done them before, and they do some quality content. And I'm happy to be sharing this one with you. I was trying to figure out something short, like really short I could do, between now and December, because December has some stuff coming out that I'm going to want to get right on. Of course, there's the, uh, book two of... Uh, Pillars of the Earth, but there's something else that it was just announced today that has been in the works for years and years, and I'm excited for it to finally come out this next month. What is it? Well, that's going to be a surprise. But anyway, without further ado, let's see what this game is about. No. Alright. So, I guess this is it. Years of watching and waiting and hoping, and it comes down to this. Do I love you? Do I miss you? I don't know for sure, I hardly know you. But you're the closest thing to family I've got, and I suppose that's something. Goodbye, Auntie. Wherever you are. What a morning. At least I'm home now. Alright, so uh, this works like your basic point-and-click adventure game. Um, this one has the more uh, context-sensitive thing where you click there on something. There are bars over the windows. I'm not getting in that way. And you don't use like a finger, you don't use the walk icon or things like that. It's just context-sensitive. The windows look into the lobby of the building. Uh, you right-click and it looks, you left-click and you interact, and you click and you walk. So that's basically all you need to know. We do have uh, this. What's this letter? Okay, um... Dr. Donald Quentin Bellamy Medical Hospital. Sorry for the beeping in the background. That's the alarm system because the door is opening and closing. Anyway, Miss Blackwell, my name is Dr. Donald Quentin and I was your aunt's primary care physician here at Bellevue Hospital. I've seen to your aunt's needs since she arrived here 25 years ago. Please accept my heartfelt condolences for your loss. Feel free to visit my offices at any time. I am sure we have much to discuss. Sincerely, Donald Quentin, MD. Hmm, interesting. So that was her aunt that she apparently tossed the ashes of the river into. The ashes of the river. No, the, her, the ashes into the river. I don't even know how to word that sentence. It, was a grammatical mess to begin with. Anyway, uh, I don't know who this guy is, but let's just go home. Hi there. Uh, hi? So who are you visiting today? So, um, so yeah, instead of like saying exactly what you're going to say, sometimes it just gives you reactions you can do. Um, 
Just laugh it off. Oh. Ha ha. Seriously, who are you here to see? Can't let you in unless you tell me. Um, I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. Who's this punk? Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you before? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. Who the hell are you? Jim Birdo. All right. Jim. Where's the regular doorman? Jeez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. I stepped in to help because I know everybody. How come nobody told me? Notices were posted all over the building. I put them up myself. If you lived here, you'd have seen them. Who pays attention to things like that? Well, that's not my problem. Little jerk. Please, I've had a really tough morning. I need to get home. Sorry, lady. Rules are rules. Listen, I really live here. Fourth floor, number 4E. 4E. Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? No! I live there, and I want to go there. Thank you very much. Oh. Hmm. Maybe you're telling the truth. He sees reason. Thank God. Do you have any ID? A driver's license or something? Yes. I have a driver's license. It's upstairs. In my desk drawer. Crap. <laughs> Come on, this is New York. Who actually drives? True, but I still can't let you in unless you prove you live here. Oh, come on. I have my apartment key. Will that do? Sorry, no. That could be any key. Well, let's go upstairs and see if it works. And leave the door unattended? Can't do it. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Out of my way. I'm going in. I wouldn't do that. Why? Are you going to stop me? Me? No. But I've got a cell phone in my pocket with 911 program, Dan. All I have to do is hit send and the cops will be here in five minutes. Are you serious? Totally serious. I don't believe this. They won't arrest me for going into my own home. Okay, I have no ID, and you don't know me. What can I do to prove that I live here? Hmm. Well, can anyone in the building vouch for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know anybody here. How long have you lived here again? Be quiet. Not all of us are social butterflies. Okay, whatever. Hey, what about Nishanti Sharma? He could vouch for you. Who is this Nis... Uh, Nish... Nishanti. Nishanti Sharma. He lives in 4F. You know, right next door to 4E. You really don't get out much, do you? Your point? Nothing, but I'm sure she could vouch for you. Great, call her up. She's not here. Of course she isn't. So I gotta wait here all day for her. You might have to. Although, she usually goes to Washington Square Park in the mornings. You could look for her there. Ugh. <sighs> You may have to do that. So, let me get this straight. You want me to go all the way to the park to look for a woman who might be there, and if she recognizes me, then, and only then, I'll be granted the privilege of entering my own home? That's pretty much it, yeah. This is really stupid. I'm not the one who forgot my ID. Oh, I want to punch this kid. How long is this strike going to last? I don't know. Could be a couple hours or a couple days, depending on whether they reach a settlement or not. I don't know the details. I'll be back. See you around. Ugh. So yeah, there's not much we can do there. We've got to uh, go to the park. So we have a little uh, map here, and the hospital's where the doctor wants to see us, but let's actually just get home first. Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty, I wonder why. Hmm. Oh, well. Mmm. Now I'm getting a stress headache. I need to get home. <sighs> yeah, let's just find... Oh, hello, puppy. Oh, hey, puppy. Hi. I don't think so. No, no, pet the puppy. Pet the dog. I don't think so. Oh. The little Boston Terrier. That's her. I recognize her from my building. Nishanti Sharma, was it? This is gonna be awkward. Just a little bit. Especially with everyone watching. That's Nishanti Sharma. My next door neighbor, apparently. She's playing some sort of flute. Hmm. He's wearing one of those extendable leashes. 
Well, anyway. The dog's leash is tied to the trash can. Uh, excuse... I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. Oh, I know the feeling. So, uh, what can we do to get her attention? I don't think so. I don't really think so. Really? Nothing? Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, what we can do, this is not I'm not very untying obvious. the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. <laughs> I believe if we... Can we not? Okay. I don't think so. Ah. Oh, whoops. I clicked outside the thing. Okay, we have to extend. I was trying to get it around the trash can, but you actually want to do this. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. And that gets Nishanti's attention. There, all better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you. The lady next door. Yeah. Hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No, Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. Um, compliment the pooch. That's a cute dog you've got. <laughs> oh, I love, I love Rosangela's just, smile. Normally he behaves, but he seems to have taken a shine to you. Oh, great. Anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said... Oh, right. Um... Yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, that's the problem, see? He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. You okay, Moti? Mm. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just need to get home. All right. Let's keep walking. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rosangela. She lives here. She does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. You can give angry sarcastic response to super sweet. I'm going to be angry. Fantastic. You're sorry. I am, lady. The name is Rosangela. Will you remember me now, or do I need to do a little dance as well? Hey, relax. I'm just doing my job. Poorly. Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors, after all. Yeah, I guess. <coughs> Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Polite response. I'll think about it. No thinking needed. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Defensive, give silent treatment, try to make a joke. This is the nicest one. Oh, I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes, um, their names are me, myself, and I. <laughs> um, it's a joke. Yeah, I get it. Very funny. No. I'm sure you're oh. fine. Although, your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rosangela, I'm sure. Nishanti's a nice lady. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa, if you like. Rosangela's kind of a mouthful, you know. All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. I actually really like the name Rosangela, like, a lot. What a strange lady. All right, let's get in. Home, thank God. 
I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Ugh. The moment we walk in feels like my life. Hello? This is Dr. Quentin from Bellevue Hospital. Yes? I was your aunt's primary care physician. Did you receive my letter? Yes, I received it. I haven't had the time to come by, though. That's all right. I'm sure you're busy. However, should you find the time today, my entire schedule is free. I... sure. I I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Good day. If I don't visit him, he's just going to keep bothering me. I suppose I should just get it over with. Uh, in a bit. Let's uh, take a look around here. My computer. It's a bit old, but it lets me access the internet and do my writing. Nothing for gaming? That's too bad. Just a trash can filled with crumpled up novel ideas. Oh, she's a writer. Just some old book review clippings. Mm -hmm. They're fine where they are. Oh, well, let me do anything. Let's see. I must have watched all these a dozen times. This TV was here when I moved in. It's a photograph of Auntie Lauren and me. It's me. I look scared out of my mind. I don't remember when this picture was taken, but I look about four or five years old. Auntie Lauren. She took care of me after my parents died. For most of my life, Auntie Lauren was a vegetable, slowly rotting away in a hospital bed. I don't remember what she was like before that. This picture is all I have to go by. She's been there for a while. So yeah, if you uh, sort of calculate it out, Rose Angela is about 30. And uh, I'm closer to 30 than I'd like to admit. Although I do admit I do have a huge crush on Rose Angela. I'll just put that warning there right now. Um, she may not be sort of the most uh, approachable person yet, but uh, you'll learn to love her as much as I do. That's Griff, the P.I. Bear. I've had him as long as I can remember. He's in horrible shape, but I don't have the heart to throw him away. Uh, yeah, I think I relate to her quite a bit too much. It's fake, but kind of pretty. Just a standard stove-oven combo. Out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight. Oh. My window, with the curtains firmly shut. Don't want any uh, peeping toms now, do we? That leads to my bedroom. It's an oversized closet, but it suits me fine. Well, you do have everything you need. Like, this is the kind of apartment I want. Just, you know, all the basics where you need them and nothing more. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, there's nothing else for us to do, so let's just go to the Bellevue Hospital. There's a flickering light. Looks like an internal phone. For paging doctors or patients, I guess. Well, anyway. Some kind of motivational poster. It's the security guard for the hospital. Just a small transistor radio. It says that this floor is undergoing renovations. That explains a lot. Some small keys. One of them is labeled FB. I assume that means fuse box. Well, anyway, let's uh, talk to him so we don't just go barging in. Did you have contact with Lauren Blackwell while she was here? Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. She was in uh, temporary care? No, she was in long term. That's a whole different floor. This is the floor for temp patients. I see. Oh, okay. What's with the lights? Hey, old buildings, you know? Always got problems. If the plumbing ain't broken, the lights are on the blink. It's giving me a headache, let me tell you. <laughs> so what exactly happens here on the temporary ward? It's just that. Temporary. Most insurance plans only cover a two-week stay, so this floor is designed for a high turnover rate. That's why the doctor's offices are usually down here. They need to be on hand when the new patients arrive. Okay, so let's, uh... I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay, looks legit. Go right in. Thank His you. His name's on the door. You can't miss it. Thanks.
Come in. Dr. Quentin? Yes? I'm Rosangela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in, come in. You got my letter, I trust? Yes, I did. Good, good. My condolences on the loss of your mother. Student correction, polite correction, subtle correction. Do polite. Thanks, but she was my aunt, not my mother. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, yes I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? Do you expect a response? Cautious. Let's do cautious. I'm fine. Why? Oh, no reason. Just asking questions. Goes with the job. Right. You received the ashes? Yes. I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. Um, let's do honest. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel. It's not like I knew her. Or even remember her from... before. She's like a stranger. So why did you make it a point of visiting her all those years? Uh... She was the only family I had. I guess I felt an obligation, like I had to. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead, life goes on. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Keep writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them because they were more interested in you. What do you want with me? Okay, I am this close to leaving. Why am I here? Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we say, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case. And now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. What? You never could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me. I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I, but fascinating? It might come as a surprise to you, but yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. She'd sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well, as you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right. She had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that, we had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. What about my condition? Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Blackwell. And in my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes, Patricia, I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it. There was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with the family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come in to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family history more carefully. I do apologize. I just assumed... Well, never mind. It doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No. I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. If Auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time, but I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. 
When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did Auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? It's difficult to say, but it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open, she thrashed, her screams. Well, we had to gag her eventually. Oh my God. I know. Did she still feel it when she was sedated? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. So, I had a grandmother. Apparently so. How do you know about her? It was in your aunt's case history when she was brought to us. Patricia Blackwell's symptoms were the same, word for word. Patricia's case was severe, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. So what should I do? Right now? Nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware, is all. And come talk to me if, well, there's any concern. You couldn't find any other link between the two cases? None, aside from the family connection. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too, would cry out that name on occasion. Joey? Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. Interesting. Is there anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, you're the beneficiary. It's just a folder, some documents and so on. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh, well, thanks for that. It's no problem at all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now. So, feel free to drop in any time. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure. That is kind of scary. Well, that was interesting, but uh, what more will we find out about Rosangela? And can we find anything more about this mysterious Joey? Well, you just got to find out in the coming Let's Play of... The Blackwell Legacy. It's going to take me a bit to make sure to remember the title because every single title has the name Blackwell in it. So uh, this is the Blackwell Legacy. Some kind of motivation. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a good day.